Pyrocystic neoplasm of the pancreas is a cystic condition of the pancreas that is a sac full of fluid with the lining. In this cartoon, you can see the gullet, which brings the food into the stomach, which turns it over and passes it into the small bowel. The liver produces bile, which comes down the bile tube and meets with the food to help digestion of fat. The pancreas is a gland that sits behind the stomach across the abdomen. It has two main functions. It produces enzymes that digest the food, which come down this tube and it also produces insulin. The SCN is an entirely benign condition of the pancreas. It has two main varieties, the macrocystic as shown over here or the microcystic where the fluid is filled within really tiny capsules throughout the SCN. It is more common in women and tends to come to light between the fifth and the seventh decades of life. It is more commonly being recognized because of the scans being performed for other conditions. In terms of symptoms, generally it is asymptomatic and does not cause any problems at all. When it is of a large enough size that is usually bigger than four centimeters, it may cause pain which tends to be high up in the abdomen and it may radiate to either sides or through to the back. The diagnosis of the SCN is usually through scans or and endoscopic ultrasound if required. Typically, it is the CT and MRI scans which are more specific. They can tell you about the size, location, morphology of the cyst and help differentiate it from other types of cysts. Here are two different CT scans. In this instance, we can see several cysts within the pancreas and calcification, which is quite central, which is typical for SCN. And here is a bigger cyst which is located in the body and tail area of the pancreas which is quite large and quite likely to cause symptoms. The endoscopic ultrasound is hugely helpful in differentiating this type of cyst from others. This involves inserting a flexible tube which comes down into the gullet entering the stomach and locating itself right next to the cyst. It has an ultrasound scanner attached at the tip which can take very fine detailed pictures to help make the diagnosis. A needle then sticks out and takes a biopsy as well as collecting fluid for further analyses. The biopsy can confirm the diagnosis and make sure that no malignancy exists. And the cyst fluid is examined for CEA, glucose, MLAs, and mutational analyses to firm up the diagnosis. The most important differentiating factor is whether or not the cyst is mucinous. Now, serous cysts are non-mucinous cysts and the fluid within is has water density, something that is also picked up by the scans. This differentiation is hugely important for making the correct diagnosis. Great majority of these cysts are asymptomatic and these do not require any treatment once a diagnosis has been firmly established. For cysts causing pain, usually larger than 4 centimeters, and once all other causes of upper abdominal pain have been excluded, then surgery may be considered in the fit patients recognizing the long-term risks and benefits. Surgery involves removal of the part of the pancreas that has the cyst, which could be a distal pancreatectomy or a Whipple procedure if the cyst is in the head of the pancreas, and less commonly, a central pancreatectomy. This completes this brief overview of serocystic neoplasm. If you have any comments, please do share.